Good morning everyone and welcome to a new special episode because today I'm sharing with you my seven most important accessories that I'm using as a photographer, how they help me take the photos I take or survive in those conditions. And that is extremely important. And number seven is actually something I talked about in the past that I have to update you on because my philosophy kind of completely changed around its usage. So please don't miss that out. And remember, if you too actually shoot with those or use those accessories, I want to know which one you use and maybe which one is the most important for you because we all have a different usage in life and I learn a lot from you guys. Maybe you don't realize it, but you guys teach me so much. All right, let's get started. Accessory number one is going to be, wait, did you leave a like on that video right now? Like press that button, it's gonna make sparkles, it's gonna be great. If you don't know, it helps the videos reach you actually, because otherwise YouTube decides not to send them to you. So back accessory number one is right there. That gave me time to open my bag and such. And it is this little thing that might save your butt when you're on the field. And just like me, you, it turns out that your sensor has some food or water or steam or whatever kind of dirt on it. I ended up turning on the function where it shuts the curtain down. Not in all cases because sometimes it can be a little dangerous, but let me show you how this works and how you can make use of it on the field. First, let me know in the comments if you would ever do it yourself. Because some of you were commenting that you were super afraid of doing that and this sounds super scary. But fear not, this is what it looks like. This is a little brush, super simple, with a cloth at the top and then you put a little bit of that liquid on it and you go gently on your sensor and it cleans it. And it works marvels in French Polynesia in the middle of nowhere. It saved my butt, saved my sensor, it saved my photos. So please don't dismiss it, do it yourself. You'll see, the first time is always scary. It's like many things in life, but the second time you start enjoying it. All right, accessory number two. Oh, I'm gonna start with a great one. All right, this accessory is a small, tiny printer, which oh, changed completely my approach to photographing people, for example, when I'm traveling, when I'm on the field. Why? Because I am now able to transfer the photo straight from my camera to my phone and then straight onto that little device. And what makes it so great is that in just literally two minutes, you have that photo printed out. It's small, it's tiny. It actually is on a little paper like that. You can open it and see what the paper looks like. This is the paper. It's not perfect, but to give out to people while you're shooting, when you're doing maybe street photography or travel photography, people who might have never gotten prints of photos of themselves before, I can tell you it changes the dynamic. And quick hack, if you can find that one Canon Ivy, you can also get, depending on the promo, the HP Zinc paper, which is actually cheaper than the Canon paper. Now there is also other options. I think there is Kodak maybe, and there is Instax that also does it because apparently this little printer is discontinued in some areas of the world. But please try it out. Even if it's with your friends, I can tell you this is awesome. Okay, before number three, did you know that twice a month I'm sending out an email with inspiration tips, gears, things I've watched, read, or listened to that really inspired me or made me think differently. And you can get that newsletter for free twice a month. You just have to sign up to ptlambert.com forward slash top five or ptl.fm forward slash top five and you will receive it. It's totally free and it's a little bit of inspiration and good stuff to discover before the weekend. Now, number three is this old camera i'm joking it's not this old camera number three is going to be a disposable camera i actually keep one especially when i'm doing those videos and i don't have it being sarcastic here i actually don't have one right now but i really try to have one with me at all time i use an old disposable camera just to capture easy moments that are no brainer or even behind the scenes of people i'm with everyone's laughing no one cares about those cameras and it really changes the mood and also in my opinion, it's really fun to keep those memories. Now, if you're curious, this is a Nikon Coolpix 3700, 3.2 megapixel. Look at the marketing at the front of it. Isn't that amazing? This was my first compact digital camera, and I can tell you, I've taken it everywhere. I was in Japan when I was 18 with it, and I took photos of frogs that ugh, I still loved at the time. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. 
Okay, number four. What do we have for number four? Number four is something I discovered recently. You might have seen in previous video, I was saying memory card holders are great and you have like those rugged ones that you can throw around and that are indestructible. Yes, but my cards kept falling out of it. And also it was like heavy, it was taking space and weight in my backpack. And what I discovered was those actually or memory cards don't really break that much, honestly. If you've had memory cards break, let me know. Maybe I've had one or two over the years where literally the plastic breaks. So I started buying the Sony tough ones, which are a little heavier duty. And honestly, I think it's quasi impossible to break. And those guys might prevent damage, but most importantly, this little pouch is way more than enough and it weighs nothing, it takes no space. I can place it at the back of my backpack. So I have the CF type A in there, I have micro SD and I have SD cards. I'll put the link in the description to everything I'm talking about. You can also attach it to yourself if you want. But literally, I put it at the back pocket right here in the back and I don't feel it and that's all. And it's super easy and simple. Side note, if you're wondering where I am, I'm at my parents in France, totally not my studio. I did a makeshift studio. I have a light here giving some rim light and I have the light here and there's a window there. So it's not perfect, but we try to make it work. Number five is going to be two in one, okay? First, it's gonna be that really awesome pouch in which I put a lot of cables and it looks very organized. It's easy to put together and then close it and, and throw it in your backpack and you know you have all your cables in there. But the real accessory I'm talking about right now is going to be that memory card reader. Why this one? And this is the Sony memory card reader. It's expensive, it's a little heavy, but let me tell you, it is ultra fast and it reads SD card type two and also the CF Express type A which are cards I actually use in my Sony A1 and in my Sony A7S III. Extra fast cards, there's no buffer almost when I'm shooting. Very, very convenient memory card reader. Now, it's a little heavier, but honestly for those transfer speeds and being able to read those CF Type Express Type A, it's kind of necessary. And you see, I just put it back here in my little bag and then I close it and that's it. And then there's another pouch you want to put a power charger or something I have a charger here and honestly this is super convenient I take that on the plane if I want to have just those cable uh, I think the brand is called side by side link in the description for everything that you guys want number six guys is going to be this new polarizing filters so far I've been using polarizing filters from polar pro and then I did moment Polar Pro, I don't know, I had a lot of issues with the polarizing filters. I didn't really like the effect or like the look, especially the VND filters. Ugh, sorry, I, I really had a hard time getting over how many times I destroyed footage. Even if you look at Peter's video sometimes, you'll see it goes very green and that's because of the VND. So um, yeah, just be careful. While I was in French Polynesia, I was with Emmett and Emmett started talking about this new filter he bought and it's not cheap this is an almost 200 dollars filter from sigma and it's a polarizing filter and this filter has been incredible first it's extra smooth it really doesn't take much footprint it's fairly narrow but what i love about it is that it really represents the um, colors well the colors come out nicely the polarizing effect is not too strong. It's not like destroying basically the image. And that's super important, especially when you're going a little bit wider with cameras or with lenses, you wanna be super careful. And I'll throw in another one in there. Make sure you have an old filter that you can break that was in the camera tips or the mistakes because this can help you get great shots like we saw in the previous video. Okay, so now number seven is not only that clip, but also the strap that I'm using. And I talked about it in the past and why has it changed? Well, this camera clip has been with me for billions of years. I'm joking, for a long time. And ever since I've made accessory videos, I've talked about it and I told you I absolutely love it, right? It's one of the best tool I have. A lot of you also got it and said that it helped you a lot. So. What's so great about it is that you can clip it on, off, you can put it on your belt, etc. That's awesome and I highly recommend it. Now, this other accessory, which is a camera strap that I used to use a lot because it has a quick release, just like that, 
with that little thing and that little thing was always attached to my camera which meant I could put in that camera strap at any time. But my philosophy has changed completely around it and let me tell you, I actually don't use those camera straps anymore. Some of you get really scared about that. I've seen the comments where you guys are like, he's just holding this expensive camera like that. And there is a good reason. Having the camera strap got in the way of my camera many times. I actually almost dropped it a few times where the camera strap was hanging on the side of a table. Suddenly I would walk by and I pulled the camera strap, the camera like slides sideways or I would just like walk somewhere and it just would like grab onto something. And I've had a lot of scares that I didn't have after I removed it and don't use it anymore. The wrist drop is good too, but I find it a little cumbersome to always put it on. So what do I do? I use nothing. I go naked with my bare hand and my camera. And honestly, the grip on the A1, on the S3 and on the A7 IV is so good that I don't have to worry about it because I can hold it with one finger and I always feel great and steady with it. Now, if you're removing that, make sure you get used to it a little bit because you might wanna like drop your camera suddenly thinking you have a strap, but you don't. And that's not pretty, I can tell you. Ooh, so there we go. If you're also someone who shoots without a strap, let me know in the comments. And now guys, I wanna thank you for watching this video. If anything has been helpful, make sure you leave it a big thumbs up. And remember, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I'll see you in the next episode. And for all of you who joined the training program, we're starting soon, I can't wait. If you wanna learn more, link in the description. Have a beautiful day.